since the Mega Fair and it has been quite an experience, let me tell you that. Uh, it was really a wonderful experience and uh, me and my friend Andrea uh, were astonished by all the success we had. We didn't expect, I'm serious, anything by the fair. And we made uh, some contacts, uh, we, let's say, hypothesized some partnership with some European, uh, also extra-European friends, new friends that we met at the fair, and um, well, let's say that uh, we had some issues on the fair, because after all, it's just a prototype. But, um, well, what we had, well, we had a slippery belt, which uh, showed off this uh, little pin, which I already changed, I was hoping that maybe uh, submerging a nut inside the plastic part of this carriage, which already has changed since those two weeks, uh, we went to the fair with a white one, and uh, well, it didn't succeed because uh, the pressure from the filament pushing up the motor still made this uh, wall thing to come apart and the belt to slip off the bearing, thus uh, making confusion on the x-axis, let's say this way, which is not good at all. And, uh, well, we already made so, uh, we discovered new problems with the prototype, for example, uh, when you use uh, uh, easy to insert bearings and the steel pins, they can uh, move inside the bearings when they rotate. And that what happened over here, uh, we had this Y belt uh, pull it off, by its own bearing, because by rotating the steel pin came out this way. Now let me see, it's still inside. Okay, same bearings, but now it's still inside. Let's go. Be careful, camera. No, the camera wasn't there in the fair, so I told him, ah, you should have come. Anyway, uh, so we started printing this statue of the Venus of Milo. Uh, for the fair. Well, we had some issues with the Wi-Fi, of course we had, because uh, it's already difficult when you're a visitor, think about when you are an ex exhibitor. Well, we didn't connect to the Raspberry Pi with the Octoprint, because we had no video output. I tried uh, plugging in an HDMI cable to my laptop. I had a, I have a HDMI in on my laptop, but no issues, I mean no clues on which IP address was set to the printer and such we had to wait till Friday uh, why, what's the problem by, with waiting? Uh, when I went there I said okay let's start a four, three days long print let's make sure that we can make it, make it before Sunday morning, so we can show something to the people. Well, uh, we started with this one, which with all the field, should have last like uh, 40, 40, yes, 40 hours. It's even less than two days printed, but uh, luckily we had the power 24 hours long all day uh, on, on, in that pavilion, thanks to DWS, which I, heartfully thank and um, uh, well so we started printing this but we had the problems with the Wi-Fi problems with the Raspberry because it wasn't working I don't know why uh, we had problems uh, with the belts so we had problems everywhere I mean uh, just a simple two days print took really a lot of issues so when it finally started uh, May it was on Saturday, I think. No, it was on Friday. We started it on Friday, Friday afternoon. And um, well, it started coming up nicely. Uh, uh, well, as long as the filament didn't stop crunching itself into the extruder motor, which is something that usually happened because the Bulldog extruder tends to crush the filament over the uh, filament. Of the motor, uh, 
which has such a force that if the filament is brittle, it tends to cripple it, to really break it. Uh, when you see the broken filament, you can see it's like uh, it's been cut by a scissor because it really, it really crushes, crushes it. Anyway, um, even with the filament problems, which were not dependent but to the Britain, but to the filament itself, luckily we had uh, uh, a very good filament producer near our side, which is also was a very helpful, uh, giving us some of his filament, and uh, which is Stefano Corinaldesi, which I salute again and thanks also him. And uh, he gave us a very, very nice filament, which is very useful for statues and the thing you just need to sand a little without uh, painting it because it was very, very easy to sand and it gave uh, the, the, this statue a really nice marble finish. Unfortunately, it didn't last for the whole print because it stopped like this fate should have been, maybe uh, at the breast or maybe just a little after that. I don't remember. Well, if you go on the Facebook page, you can see the, the statue without the, co the initial coating. Anyway, um, we had issues, I was saying, with the filament and the time was an issue itself because uh, by waiting all that time with all those issues, the belt slipping, the print restarting, the octoprint not working, the Raspberry tree couldn't handle octoprint and uh, not even uh, repetia server. So uh, we finally brought in uh, Intel NUC, uh, the next unit of computing, which is a small computer, is not cheap as a Raspberry tree, but actually is a lot more powerful. And uh, it simply worked without an issue, and uh, we could uh, restart and, and go at least this way up before Sunday, Sunday night when the uh, the fair closed. So uh, we tried to speed up the print. We made a program in C Sharp uh, Sunday morning to try to at least remove the infill from the G code and keep printing it empty without a fill. Uh, so there is a fill at least I think uh, till here and then it goes up like an empty shell which it is. So it's, uh, it's filled all this way up. Uh, we had also, I'll show you maybe in a video, um, we had an issue also with the, the, we were printing with dual extrusion. We had the fill on one nozzle and the perimeters in the other nozzles, in the other nozzle, sorry. Um, and it happened that the bulldog crushed the infill uh, filament and uh, it went the night of uh, Wednesday, the night between Wednesday and Saturday, without making the infill going up, let's say, from this side, uh, this height up to this, without uh, an infill. Uh, luckily, I don't know why, but when I um, programmed the G-code with Slicer, I set a rectilinear infill and not the classic hexagonal one. And this helped because in the emptiness of uh, this shell that we had, uh, it traced, I mean the printer, traced uh, bridges in the in the plain nothing, I mean in mid-air, thin air. And uh, of course the first layer that, he, that the printer again with him feel started with a little bridges that were falling a little bit in the inside but just the first one because already on the second layer that it started again placing in feel all the bridges were almost straight on the third one and upward they simply were straight so we were totally astonished because we had at least 20 centimeters we measured on one bridge it simply placed it. Well, that was a quite good cooling, but we were using turbine fans and they really cool everything. Also the nozzle, so I had to shield it from them. Anyway, uh, so the print was finished on Monday or Tuesday uh, when we came back. Uh, what are you pointing at? Uh, no, no, well, that, that's the other thing. Yeah, uh, on those two weeks, we totally 
try to relax because keep in mind that it was our first fair and we slept like uh, two hours maybe one hour per night every night <laughs> on the uh, fair week and uh, well we made uh, me, uh, me and Andrea uh, kept uh, falling asleep at every uh, red traffic light but we managed to survive anyway. So we are back from the grave and uh, after two weeks uh, we'll start rolling again. So uh, I'm now building a new extruder. Uh, I was so tired of the extruder going loose because keep in mind we are still trying to do something economical yet sturdy and efficient. We don't want crappy things. So, um, because you have to uh, get cheap stuff when you can get cheap stuff, you must get the good stuff when you want, when you have to. So, for example, uh, the Bulldog extruder will be trashed, and I bought those Titan extruder from E3D. Keep in mind, we are not sponsored in any way from anyone, not even E3D, but E3D if you want to. Well, be my, be my guest. Anyway, um, uh, so we are trying to use them. On this particular carriage, you can see the modification I did. Now, first thing, you can see it's just half carriage. Why half? Because to insert the motor in the carriage, I had to insert it from the inside. I was thinking about um, placing those uh, bearings here, maybe on the back. But uh, I mean to have uh, four point where the bearings would the contact and uh, but that thing was not so good. I mean structurally, this one too is not much. But with the flame, good metacrylate or chanacrylate. I don't remember with the composition anyway. Uh, the PLA melts and bonds totally. So. I think I will just pour some drop over here, clamp the other part when the, the motor is in place and it will work just fine. Oh, um, by doing so, I mean, uh, you can see, I'm fixing the motor straight to the carriage and uh, so we saw the two things, two issues that we have on that carriage. Uh, the motor, and uh, we, which will never again comes up, come up and uh, pull off the, the belt or whatever and uh, the extruder firmly in place totally I mean those are just two millimeters uh, thick maybe a little more I don't know should me it, it appears to be more than two millimeters to my eye but anyway it doesn't I, it, it doesn't matter anyway so uh, we had some things to also keep any the, everything a little more tidy for example when now we have uh, let me show you uh, where do we have one okay good. this is another spare b6 i keep uh, i hope to use it on a small printer i would like to build with all those nice filaments that i've uh, seen at the fair we had made contact with a lot of filament makers and i really really want to try them all now, um, you can see there are some cables, of course. Uh, you don't see also the thermistor cable, which is missing here. Now, all those cables, instead of going uh, in front of the extruder, now, like we have here, if you can show, so just not going there, there to the printer, you can see there is a webcam pointed at the printer, you can see all those cables running in front of the printer, they are no good. And with just a simple hole going through, from the bottom part to the top part, I can put them inside here, move them up, and then connect them to the board easily. Now, so that's another nice thing. So, no more M8 nut fused inside the plastic. No. Uh, instead, we have a 7.8 hole inside here, which is 2 centimeters deep. And uh, I'll simply turn the the bolt inside here. No nut, nothing, just works. So, um, well, this thing alone should have getting, uh, getting 
bet, uh, better results, let's say. Now, um, the things that we are about to try as soon as we can are 3D scanning, which we try, we are going to try with this thing, which is something that Andrea built in his spare uh, well, modeled in his spare time, which is a Zergling from StarCraft. And uh, well, they did a quite nice job. And uh, we are going to try with my camera on a turntable and see if it works. I've seen a lot of uh, open source 3D programs, uh, which are wonderful, with Mesh Lab, which is extremely wonderful as a point, to, point cloud to Mesh tool. And, uh, well, uh, of course, as you may have already seen, there is still a lot of... Ah, yeah, that's the, 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 the name of plaque which was on the stand at the fair and um, since everyone was taking it as a souvenir, I took it too. Um, yeah, also the, the poster with the mock-up. Ah, we tried to, to do that at the, at the fair, the fantasy castle uh, on one single piece. But unfortunately, and it would have lasted really for days, uh, unfortunately there was uh, some problems with the mesh. I've also seen that was a repair, that it was available a uh, repaired mesh, but wasn't working either that one. So, uh, well, uh, I hope to replace this wall useless carriage as soon as possible. I am very, very um, I want stuff to work. I want stuff till it works flawlessly. And um, the nice thing that I see also is that uh, when we were at the fair, the only question that people keep kept me asking it was about oscillations and uh, the open frame, and all the vibration, all those things. Um, everything moves accordingly, no oscillation. They, uh, from inside of the system we will ever damage the, the print. Now, you know, you know I print the infill on high speed, but the infill is inside. The outer perimeter, as you can see, I made it slow, so no oscillation uh, issues. I mean, it works. So, uh, next things that we will do, uh, I hope to continue all uh, lessons on what uh, I learned about doing this printer soon um, and uh, if you are lucky uh, maybe the next videos I mean not the next one but maybe in the near future will be done uh, in a better room than this one because uh, since we had a lot of success, unexpected success, uh, well, I think we will move the thing and maybe enlarge it a little bit like, let's say, two meters per one meter per one meter. Should be nice. So, I think that for today I have talked uh, enough, uh, the cameraman said yes, even more than enough anyway. So, see you soon. Uh, don't forget to add comments, uh, whatever you would like to see next, or questions you could have about the printer and the features. See you next time.